Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Well, Friday mornings are dedicated to giving an opportunity to younger men from this congregation that are not just going to talk to the young people, but are going to also share something from the Word of God for us. And so without any further delay, we introduce to you Brother Isaac Roberts. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Good morning and God bless you. I want to thank you for tuning in this Friday morning, and I want to give Pastor and Sister Mayo the honors as well, and I want to thank Pastor for allowing me the opportunity to speak to you once again. And with that, let's just open up with a word of prayer, and we'll just dive right into this. Lord, I love you, and I praise you, mighty God. Lord, there is none like you. There is none beside you. And Lord, I thank you for the opportunity for this morning, Lord, to study the Word of God, Lord, to look into the Word of God, that Lord, they're able to look into it, Lord, and I pray that you'll give me revelation, crystallinity, and understanding Lord, of this subject, that, O Lord, that I may speak eloquently and fluently to these people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, in, I want to draw our attentions to Leviticus chapter 10, verses number 1 through 3. And it says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. And I would like to title this this morning, Strange Fire. And just for a little bit of context of this, in Leviticus chapter 9, they offer what is the scapegoat offering on, for the Day of Atonement. It's to push the sins forward another year for the children of Israel. And so that way their sins are pushed forward for another year. And this is after all that. They're getting ready to enter into the holy place and then the Holy of Holies. And the priests are offering the offering at the, at the brazen altar. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer. A censer was simply a fire pan or brazen, a brazen bowl. I guess you could say it is what it is. And what they would do is that they would take a coal from the brazen altar, put it in to their little to their censer, and then they would put incense over the top of it. The problem is, is when they did that, what they did is they didn't take a coal from the brazen altar. They started it themselves and put it into the bowl. And then they put their incense over the top of it, then offered it. And that's what God didn't want happening. And, and it says in verse number two, and there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them. And so what's really, really interesting here is after they put the incense and offered strange fire before the Lord, the word strange there actually means profane fire, a different fire. It wasn't right. This, the, it was off. There was something off about the makeup of the fire. It wasn't taken from a sanctified place. It wasn't taken from a holy place. It was made by man and offered it to God. And that was a, and that was a big no-no when it came to the offering. And with that being a strange fire, God, of course, went out and devoured them. But I, what I really want to draw the, draw the difference here and the context here from is the, as as people, you know, as people, we often come before the Lord. We come, we come bearing our sins. We come to get washed, come to get clean. We come to do all that. But at the same time, there's also a lot of people that will come and be, they'll look the part, they'll act the part. I mean, these were the pre, these were two of the priests, the sons of Aaron. They looked the part. They, dress, they were dressed in the robes. They were dressed in all the garments. But their consecration wasn't right. It wasn't right before the Lord. It wasn't right. And God rejected them because, because of that. They didn't take their consecration and their holiness and their conviction from a sanctified and holy place. What they did is they put the carnal man into the brazen altar and then unto, or into the center, then into the brazen altar. They did it completely backwards of what it was actually supposed to be. And that's what's really, really important is God has his way and God has his mode of doing things. And we can't circumnavigate that. We can't go around it. We can't go over it. We can't go under it. God has a way of doing things. And what's really, really important 
is as people, we can't be taking our own fleshly devices, our own fleshly wants and desires and putting it into that brazen little sensor and then offering it to God. It's impure. It's not right. It's not holy. That's where we have to go to the altar, take the ember, put it into our own little sensor and then put our incense over it, which is our prayers, and then offer it before the Lord. Because it's pure, and it's right, and it's holy. Because it's been sanctified by God himself. It's not from us. And you know, and a lot of people, let's be real, you know, we'll walk in and, you know, there's times where maybe we're not, a, not all the way right with God. We're coming into a Sunday service, and we're like, you dress nice, you look good, you sound good, you're worshiping, you, you look the part, but you're not sanctified. You're not holy. You're not right with your God. And you're coming in expecting great things to happen, expecting such and such and this and that. And God's like, what about this? He stops you at the front door. Because he's like, wait a second. You have to do this first before I can take you any farther. And I kind of want to get go back to that sensor part because this is important. Because the sensor was made of brass. It was made of copper or something along those lines. And often... That's used to define and as a symbol of the external man. It's pretty. Brass is a very pretty color. It's got interesting hues. You can patina it, all that. It looks good. But at the same time, it's not pure. It's been tainted. It's been marred. It's been scratched. It's been, and you know, you can make it a beautiful thing. And you, that's a whole other lesson all on itself. But at the same time, when the patina sets in and when the brass changes its color, as man, it's not a pure thing. It's not right in the sense of spiritually. And that's why gold and silver were used inside the temple is because it was a pure metal. It was a pure alloy of things. And so often we're, as the physical man, we're supposed to stop at the front door. We're supposed to get sanctified. Then we're supposed to go into the holy place. And, you know, then they would light the altar of showbread, the altar of incense. We would have the leaven bread, all that good stuff. And what would happen is, is that's the Holy of Holies. And, I, and after all that's been done, then you would go into the Holy of Holies and make that offering before the Lord. And that's really, really important because this is a type and a shadow of what was to come later on in the New Testament, which at first you have repentance, Jesus dying for our sins. Really important. That's the blood. That's the blood offering. And then you would have water baptism, which is us cleaning off the sin out of our lives. Then you go into the spiritual realm getting the Holy Ghost, the Holy of Holies. And it was that very, very foundational thing. We can't get there if we're not willing to do the first step. We can't get there and find out what God has for us if we're not willing to go for the first step and do the work and dig it out and deal with our own spirits. Because there's a lot of times it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It's very, it's hard nitty gritty work because God will start illuminating things in your life where you're like, I didn't even know I had an issue with that. I didn't even know I even dealt with that. And God is putting that spotlight like, here's sin. Pray about it. Get all fast about it. Do this, do that. And it's up to you as a person. It's all, God's always ready to take you to the next step. It's us that stops ourselves, funny enough. And so when God shows you that thing, you got to be sensitive enough and real enough with yourself like, okay, God, I understand I'm not right in this. Because there's a lot of times people, it may not even be something that's bad or wrong, Sometimes it could be a time management thing, like maybe you're spending more time on social media, video games, whatever it may be, books, whatever. And then other times that may be something where you're just like, you know, maybe I shouldn't quite be looking at this or watching this or reading this. You know, it's a, we all have those things that God will bring up in our spirits and we all know those things because we all run into them. It's our own private thing. And God is willing to put that on, out on the altar and be like, what are you going to do about this? It's up to us at that point. Are we going to get be sanctified? Are we going to get the distractions out? Are we going to get the things that are taking us away from God in, in order to get closer to God? All God's doing is just trimming, trimming the hedges in order to make it look pretty and to bear fruit. That's all he's trying to do is to, is to perpetuate us and to cultivate us into something greater and better. And oftentimes I understand that we can't see the end result. We're like, God, why does this matter? I mean, really, what's the point of this? We may not be able to see that first step. But God sees the end result of what you could be. And you just have to be, have faith in God and be like, okay, God, I don't know why I'm doing this. don't know what the point of this is, but I'm going to take that step. 
and I'm going to go for it. And the more and more you do that, the more and more it's maybe it may not become easier, but you know what's but you know what's coming. You know how to get there. You know how to deal with it. You know how to push forward through it. At the beginning, you're like, man, this is this is weird. This I'm not. This isn't making any sense. True, but do you have the faith? Do you have faith that God's going to do something great for you? Do you have faith that God's going to open doors? Do you have faith that God's going to help you with your life in those aspects? Because being consecrated and holy is the only way God can take us and form us to the way he wants us. And that's such an important thing because God can't take you and form you if you're not even willing to break down the hard exterior. He can't shape that. I mean, God can do anything, don't get me wrong, but he's, as a gentleman, he's waiting on you to take that step. It's a relationship with God. It's not just a one-way street. The want and the desire has to be there in order for you to want the things of God and to be sanctified, pure, and holy before God. Because the more and more you delve into that holy place, the more you delve into the holy place, the holy of holies, the spirit, the Holy Ghost, will come upon you and it'll begin to change you. It'll change your mindset. It'll change your spirit. And that's how powerful this is. It changes who you are on the outside because the outside is is a representation of what's on the inside. And if you're willing to keep all your instruments pure and if you're willing to keep everything right with God, it'll start showing through and you'll be a shining light and an example to the people around you. And so don't let your fire die out. Don't let your prayer life die out. Every day, take that ember, take it from the brazen altar, take it from the hard place and not from the carnal man. Because you can always come to pray and be like, eh, there's pray, clocked in, hour in, hour out, you know, and you're out. Did you really accomplish much? More than likely, no. It's good that you pray, but sometimes a 30-minute prayer, prayer time, if it's led and Holy Ghost driven, is a million times more powerful and useful than just punching that time clock. And so I just want to leave you with this. Being consecrated and holy with your God and finding the time of prayer and fasting to be consecrated and making your spirit right and pure with God is the most important thing that we ever do. And I would just want to thank you. And let's end this with a word of prayer. Lord, I love you and I praise you, God. Lord, thank you. And Lord, help us to be consecrated. Help us to be holy and more pure before you. That, our oh Lord, everything we do and everything we say, may it be right unto you. And Lord, may it be unto you. That, our oh Lord, every action and every word that we say, that, our oh Lord, God, that it's going to be, O oh Lord, in your light, in your likeness, and Lord, and guided by you. In Jesus, I want to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.